ML Nation, this is Simon Chan, and I'm fired up to bring our special guest today. This is someone who I first met over five years ago. I still remember Eric Worre, Les Brown, an event. And at that time, she was like on great momentum. And since then, just re- watching her on social media, just grow, grow, grow her business. And I finally have her on the show. Ladies and gents, we have Lauren Sims. Hey, Lauren, are you ready to make it happen? I'm so excited. Thank you for having me on here. What a treat. Before network marketing, Lauren Sims had a private practice as a clinical nutritionist and was a fitness professional and was totally burnt out. Even though she had two graduate degrees, she was in tremendous debt through her school loans and was working around the clock just to make ends meet. Today, Lauren's a six-figure earner with a team of over 12,000 customers and reps and has earned over a million dollars in lifetime commissions. She's also the author of Why Can't is a four-letter word and has come out for a second book in the summer of 2020 called Get Off the Curve. So Lauren, I've uh, given ML Nation just a brief intro, but please t- share about your background and how did you come across network marketing? Well, thank you again so much for having me on here. And um, you did have a great little summary there. Um, I would say, you know, I've always been in health and wellness, and that's just my passion of wanting to make a difference in people's lives. I went out um, in undergrad, more of like a sociology, psychology path, but quickly realized that wasn't it, um, wasn't going to be for me. Became a personal trainer, group fitness instructor, and through all of those jobs, including running my own practice, what I realized was I was burnt out from exchanging time for money. I knew that I loved being an entrepreneur. I knew that I was psychologically unemployable in terms of I wanted my own hours or my own schedule. But I would ask myself, like, how will I ever go on vacation? You know, I have to show up to make money. And if I missed a week or two weeks of work to take a long trip, the cost of not working was far beyond the cost of the trip, if that makes sense. And throughout that, and that was my 20s, so I joined uh, network marketing um, right after my 30th birthday. And in my 20s, I was introduced to a lot of companies one of two ways. I either was invited to an at-home presentation or someone shared something with me like we've all um, been exposed to, and it just wasn't a good fit. You know, I kind of left thinking, ah, oh, that's not something I'm passionate about, or I didn't really understand the business model. You know, I think we've all heard timing is so important, and it just wasn't something that landed on me. And I also was introduced to a lot of companies because as a health practitioner, people brought me their products. And I would say, where did you get this from? I was so um, perplexed by it because I didn't understand the business model like I do today. And I knew it wasn't from a grocery store. I knew it wasn't from a typical online, you know, nutraceutical website. And people would say things like, oh, my neighbor gave it to me or my son's teacher gave it to me. And I thought, why is your son's teacher giving you nutritional (laughs) products? Like I, I couldn't really understand it. And so looking back, I had really learned about a lot of different products or a lot of the industry for a while without understanding it. And Ultimately, I think we all have hit a point in our life that if we want something to change, we have to change. And I hit my rock bottom. So shortly after my 30th birthday, I had paid off an extension that I had with the IRS, which I share that because that wiped out my checking and savings account at the time just to get caught up with taxes. I um, went through a terrible breakup, someone I had been with for about six years and we were living together. And my dad had also been recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And so after this breakup and I moved and I literally with every penny I had um, put in the deposit, you know, first and last month's rent, the whole shenanigans to move. And I had so much pride, you know, ego bigger than the planet to ask for help. I had $17 to my name left and I was in this brand new apartment with nothing. So a broken heart, total broken bank account. I didn't have any furniture, I didn't have any kitchen stuff. I mean, I was literally at my rock bottom. And the one person, my dad, who always would rescue me, I thought, number one, Lauren, you're 30 years old and you have two bachelors and two masters, like you should not be in this situation. And number two, he had just really received a life sentence and I thought, I'm not gonna burden him with my issues, like I'll figure this out. And my cousin, who had been a product user um, at that time for six years, she still is, she has never built this business. 
So listen to me when I say tell your customers that there's an opportunity because they will give you referrals. She has never, ever, ever built a network marketing business, but she knew about it. She had seen the opportunity and she reached out to someone and I was fortunate enough to receive a phone call from a top earner in our company. And she said, I have something that you should look at. I have something that can help you. And people always ask me, what was it that she said, my mentor, my real life guardian angel said, on the phone to me that got me to pay attention when I had had so much exposure to other companies. You know, I'd sat through so many in homes. I had watched so many, you know, videos that people had sent me. I'd seen different products. It was like, what got my attention? And the first was I was at my rock bottom. What I was doing was not working and I was exhausted, but she really asked me questions that got straight to the pain points. And I will never forget that she asked me things like, what would it be like to not exchange time for money? She asked me what it would be like to have a team of people and how many more people we could impact than what I was doing in my current 10 by 10 nutritional office. She asked me what it would be like, you know, if I wasn't exchanging time for money, kind of a day to day life, um, like schedule for me. But the number one question she said, what do you need most right now? And I said a bed. And she mapped out the like very, very, very upfront bonuses in our company's compensation plan. And I thought, oh my gosh, like how many spin classes would I have to teach to make that same amount of money? How many shifts at the bar where I was bartending would I have to work to make that same amount of money? And thankfully, I also was in alignment with the products. You know, as a health and wellness person, I could get behind the product. So it was something that just resonated with me and I thought I can do this and I have to do this. Hmm. It's uh, very interesting. Did you try the products before doing the business or were you at that point so rock bottom? Like, like hey, this seems pretty good. I'm going to do it. The latter. So I'd heard of the company and I had known people that had used them. Um, part of them were my clients, you know, that had come in and that, that was one of the products that they had said, like, what do you think about this? And because of the purity, I was excited about it and knew that I could recommend it. But I joined for the business, not for the products. I know that I'm um, the anomaly for a lot of network marketers. It's usually an accidental business that gets created. Um, but I absolutely did join for the business and brought people on board, mostly as accountability partners right away. I was like, let's try this together, um, knowing we had a money back guarantee. And I said, if it doesn't work, we'll send it back. But I had to. I had to get those products paid for right away because I didn't have the money to be able to do it on my own. How were your first couple of weeks like once you got started? Busy. <laughs> so I was working 80 to 100 hours a week in all of my jobs before I started my network marketing business. So I'm not a mom. Like I didn't have little kids, but I understand what it's like to be busy. And I was literally running around like a chicken with its head cut off from 4 a.m., 5 a.m. to midnight every single day. So I would personal train in the morning, teach a couple group fitness classes, shower and get ready at the gym, drive to my private practice, you know, go back, train a couple clients, go bartend at night. And it was absolute insanity looking back what I did. And I thought, how am I supposed to fit this into the pockets of my life? And one of the things I did was start listening to podcasts when I was driving, when I was showering and getting ready. You know, I thought I can't do this in addition to, but if I'm going to spend the time in the car anyways, it turned my car into a, you know, MLM university and absolute, like I have to be a student of this industry. I also got very clear on what was going to be income producing as opposed to being busy. And I started talking to people in every situation that I was in, just maximizing those connections. So when I was personal training, I would use the products in front of them and I would bring them up to those clients. When I was waiting tables and bartending and I would use the products or I would be talking about my success to my coworkers and just sharing that story to be able to get them excited and get them on board. I would you know, message people late at night and just say, hey, I'm so excited about something I was just introduced to. I cannot wait to chat with you. Do you have time tomorrow to talk? And I would give two times. And this was something I really wasn't trained to do. And looking back, how important that is as a skill for a network marketer to set appointment times, I did it organically because I was that busy. I only literally had those windows of time. So I would tell people, I can call you at one o'clock after a client or at four o'clock when I'm driving. And I just maximized the little teeny time that I did 
to make sure I was sharing the story. I was giving presentations. I was utilizing, you know, my upline, my mentors for three-way calls or for presentations as I was learning. But from the very, very beginning, I started tracking goals. That was something that I knew if I was going to sacrifice any time that I had to do this, I was going to make sure every minute was worth it. And I set goals from the very, very first week. I was with my company to make sure that I was growing and I was actually um, making um, that return of investment of my time and not just being busy. Um, you said you tracking goals. Uh, what goals did you track? So without being um, you know, real specific with ranks and everything, one of the things that I still do was how many new connections I made every single day or every single week. I think we all know that it is a numbers game. And even though I do believe that we have a, a product that is you know, um, consumable and it will deliver an emotional response for people and I'm passionate about it, a lot of people aren't ready yet. And just like any sales, you have to be willing to find the people who are ready. And so whether I was tracking how many people I was talking to, how many people said yes, how many new customers I brought on, how many people I was promoting, and then ultimately how much money I needed to make. So our compensation plan pays us a variety of ways and I understood that right away. And I was tracking that. No matter what, what way I had to get there to earn mm -hmm. the money that I needed, I was treating this like a business and I was the CEO and I really, really wanted to take it to the top. So what type of results did you get when you first started? You were super busy, productive. When you ask results, you're talking about with the the first the anyway. first uh, the first ninety days after you got started. The first ninety. Did days, Did you do well, I, or were you just getting zeros and no's? <sighs> Wait, what was the, what did you just ask me? Oh, did you? Did, I mean, did you get any results, sign ups, and customers, or did you struggle like most people do? I had a rapid success, and I, I often I tell that with people, and I'm transparent about it. However, when I speak to people, I want them to be reasonable with their expectations. And I use this analogy often um, where I say, if you go into a restaurant and they said, you know, how long is the wait? And they said, it'll be an hour. And you get seated in half the time. You're like, yes, right? It only, yeah. I only waited for 30 minutes. But if it's the opposite and they say, oh, your wait's 15 minutes. And all of a sudden you're waiting for an hour and you're like, what's going on? And you're frustrated. And sometimes I think that happens with network marketers in that we really overestimate what we can do in the first year, but we underestimate what we can do in the next five to 10 and to be reasonable with that. So even though I had extreme success in the first few you know, weeks or months, I always tell people be patient and this is a journey and to not get frustrated of what doesn't happen right away and to really keep that long-term plan and vision in mind when I joined, I was in it for the 10-year plan. I always said that's how long I'd gone to school with all these degrees to barely be making it, that it had to have been better than that. I was absolutely committed for that same amount of time. But in the very beginning for me, um, I sponsored about just under 100 people in those first few months. But I will tell you, I probably talked to 1,000. So I got all of the same no's, I was just working harder. I was reaching out to more people in a day than some people do in a month. You know, I remember um, not having to work on a Sunday brunch shift and I thought I, I'm gonna maximize the six hours and I talked to nearly 200 people by text or Facebook message in the same six hours. And so even though I was duplicating and I was growing and I was grabbing all of the upfront leadership bonuses and I was earning money in our leadership pools and a lot of the money that's up front before you have a residual team, I was working incredibly hard. I mean, I was doing at least two in-homes every single week. So it was um, a result of the amount of effort that went out there, but my income surpassed what I was doing annually as a nutritionist in my first six months with my company. Why do you think a lot of uh, distributors struggle? while you had the success? I think the number one reason that a lot of distributors struggle is they can't get out of their own way. They worry way too much what people think about them as opposed to what they can offer them. Like when you really believe in your product and service and you know you can impact live in the same reason that you want to build this business, not worrying what they think about you, but 
being able to cast a dream for them and share the, a hope and vision for their life is a shift. So I think that would be the number one is people just get wrapped up in their head that they are salesy, that they're going to be rejected, that people are going to think they're pushy instead of really coming from a servant leadership standpoint. And right along that, I think the other reason that distributors really struggle is that they are busy procrastinating, but they're not doing the work. And so I find even with my own team that people are constantly learning. They're getting ready to get ready. They're listening to podcasts, they're reading books. And I'll say, how many people did you talk to today about the product, about the business? And they're like, oh, well, I was gonna call this girl or I was gonna do this. And they're not ever actually doing the do and reaching out and asking people to take a look at what they're excited about. I know you are super consistent, you're very intense. How important is consistency to success? That is the number one word that I used in 2019 was consistency. And here's what I always use the analogy for because my background's in health and wellness. If someone was not consistent with the gym, they're not going to stay in shape. You know, I mean, that's a lifestyle, that's a habit. And it's easier, I think, to maintain than to start and stop and start and stop. And our business is the same way. And often when building a network marketing business or you know being a part of a multi-level uh, company, it's not a lot of hours, but it is the consistent hours, much like fitness. And whether that's you building your brand on social media, which is like the lights on in your store that people even know that you're doing something or reaching out or following up or doing presentations, doing recognition, celebrating your team, building the culture, that without that, I mean, I heard something in the very, very, very beginning of my build that I never forgot, which is your team will do 10% of what you do and 100% of what you don't do. Mm. And the speed of the leader was the speed of the pack. And I just thought if I need my team to be posting on social media, even a handful of times a week, I have to do it daily. If I wanted them to be reaching out to three or four or five people a day, I had to raise the bar and reach out to 10 or 15 people a day. But no matter what the effort is, if it's part-time or full-time, in and out of the game, there's no trust. There's no credibility. And sadly, I think people, there's so many haters out there, they're waiting to see you fail. They're waiting to see like, ooh, I knew she wasn't gonna make it, or I knew she'd quit just like everything else, or I knew he would quit that showing up day in and day out is so important. I got a message today actually from a girl and she wrote me on Facebook and she said, I don't know if you'll remember me, but I was your server four years ago and you asked me if I was interested in the business opportunity. I see you're still doing it and I would love to chat with you. We have not had a conversation since I first connected with her and we connected on social media and that right there is the power of being consistent. Yes, you know what? Like people may not. I always teach. People may not comment. They may not like your post, but they're watching you. And it took four years of watching, and like that's why the longer you stay, the business gets easier and easier. Because as long as you stay consistent, people are watching you. All the time, and they see that you are successful with it. They see that you're passionate about it. That you still believe in it. It's yeah, completely agree. Hey, yeah. Uh, let's change topics a little bit. Um, talk a little bit about your book. Well, the first one, why can't is a four letter word and what inspired you to write it? So why can't is a four letter word it started as an ebook. It was a free download from my website as more of a lead generation than anything else. And it's simple. It's a little tiny pocketbook. It could be read in you know, a matter of minutes. And it's all about just getting out of your own way. Those limiting beliefs and all the stories we tell ourselves about what we can't do. And just to eliminate that word, to be unstoppable and be the person that you were created to be, the person you're destined to be. And it, it really, I never thought I would take it to publication, except when I wanted to write the real book, the big book, Get Off the Curb. My publisher, my writing coach and editor was like, you should publish the other one. You know, it, it looks good and they lead off each other. And so that's kind of how that came to fruition. And uh, talk about this uh, new book that's coming out in the summer of 2020, Get Off the Curb. What's that about? So Get Off the Curb, and it actually it came out in July of 2019. So that's out. And that's uh, mostly my story, but with a lot of action items. I think we've all read a book or listened to a podcast, been to a seminar and thought, oh my gosh, like that's amazing and I feel really good. And then you leave and there's no implementation. 
And with my um, with sharing the story, I really wanted people to take things away so that they could have the same success, that they could apply what I've learned to help them. But ultimately, working with my business coach, one of my mentors, she said, Lauren, you're going to get to a point that people can't relate to you. You know, they're going to see the success that you've created or the life you have and thought, I can never do what she does. And she really was encouraging me to be vulnerable and to share some of the hardships and all the wall kicking moments and all of the grittiness and the yuckiness of the story to, for people to see where my passion comes from, for people to see where my work ethic and drive comes from. And that's ultimately um, what was the catalyst to kind of unravel that story. So speaking about that, get off the curb is getting them to take action. If someone is struggling right now, what's one thing they should do immediately? You know, after, right after listening to the show. I think for people that ask themselves the question, what things will look like in five years right now if they don't change whatever it is that they're doing. So if it's their weight, you know, if their their pants aren't buttoning, they're out of energy, they don't want to work out, what, what are they going to look like in five years if they continue doing exactly what they're doing? The same eating habits, the same exercise habits, if they're taking care of their body. Same with their bank account. If what you were doing stayed the exact same, what does it look like in five years? And I think usually that fear that shows up, that image of, oh gosh, like I don't want to look like that. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want my bank account to look this way. Really will be the implementation for someone to say, what do I have to do for things to change? What action item, what habit do I have to change? What decision needs to happen to go the other way? Because looking at it like, uh, I'll feel like this tomorrow or the next day, Five years, like, you know, if someone's 35 right now, they're looking at their 40th birthday or if they're 50, they're looking at their 50th birthday. And that's a question that I always ask because they'll find it inside of them what they have to do. That's awesome. Really good questions. Um, Here's my favorite question. And you've been in in network marketing for seven years, right? Six and a half. Six and a half years. What is your worst moment in network marketing to the point maybe even... You hated the business, you had regrets doing it, but you didn't quit. You stayed, and that's why you are the leader you are today. That is a phenomenal question, and I love it when you ask other leaders this. It's something that has actually inspired me over the years of listening to other interviews. And I, if it's okay, I'd like to share just something brief up front and then something once I was more of an established leader. But the first part for me was when I really got started and I received hate mail from patients that I worked for. I was called a money whore, a sellout, I mean, really, really hurtful things because I had distinguished myself as this functional medicine practitioner, you know, as this clinical nutritionist and did a lot of things with individual care. And suddenly, you know, I was in this company where everybody was using the same products and I was putting everyone on the same protocol. And even though I was passionate, I wanted to help people, it hurt, stung, you know, that's my reputation or people I cared about. And ultimately it was making a decision of how many people could I bless and serve and help working, you know, as a sole proprietor in my office. Like how many people could I see in a 24 hour day where when I understood the vision of this model and the compound effect, and I thought, I'm not going to let the one or 2% of people that are naive or have a stigma against this get in my way and stop me not only from creating the life of my dreams and you know fulfilling the visions that I had, but being able to reach thousands and thousands and thousands of people globally that I would never have been able to do in a traditional business model. So I think in the beginning that what overcame that and kept me in the game was understanding this business model. And we often ask people, you know, what's your belief in your product or belief in yourself and the compensation plan? My belief in network marketing was so low because I didn't understand it. And I got to work to truly understand the profession so that I could carry out and be as successful as I envisioned once I really could kind of get behind it. And then about halfway through my career, and this was the one I really wanted to share with you, I had a lot of adversity within my team. You know, there was a lot of drama and people wanting to split off and kind of want to do their own thing. And what was fun in the beginning, we were all doing it together. It got really um, kind of negative and it was com- competitive and just not in a really fun way. And I listened to a sermon that I'll never forget. And it was talking about how our job is never to be people pleasers. It's not about popularity, but it's about your passion and your purpose. 
and coming back to just kind of the foundation of sales that 20% of people are always going to love you. 20% of people are never going to like you. And the other, you know, 60% is kind of fair weather fans and making a decision that I wasn't going to lead a team trying to please everybody because ultimately I would please no one. And that I had to lead with my core values, with my vision, aligning with our company's mission statement, making sure I showed up with integrity and being able to just let go of the fact that not everybody was going to like my style, not everybody was going to like my way. But throughout that, it also created an opportunity to get others to step up and say, I'm not very good at that, but you're great at that. And to be able to create a culture of teamwork and camaraderie by not trying to do it all and allowing other people to step up, it really smoothed a lot of things over. Great stuff there. I like it. 20% like you, 20% don't like, never like you, and 60% are fair weather fans. That's good. Like being a football player, right? <laughs> yes. Um, let's talk about... Um, You've been awesome. I want to go to some quick questions to pick your brain as you go to the end of the show. Okay, it just could be okay. one sentence and uh, two liners. So the first one is, what is one of your favorite success quotes that motivates you, Lauren? So that there's so many out there, right? But I think that it's Jim Rohn, and that if you really want to do something, you'll find a way, and if you don't, you will find an excuse. Hmm, it's good. What is one habit that's helped you become successful? We talked about this a lot, which was consistency. But if I had to choose, it's making sure I have new connections every single day. I'm constantly finding new people to talk to. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? To put my blinders on and run my own race. My mentor used to always talk about comparison as the thief of joy. And she said, never look up, never worry what anybody else is doing. She's like, this is your journey, your path, and just stay focused in your lane. What's your favorite prospecting tool? So say someone is a, a qualified prospect. Do you send them, do you do a phone call? Do you do a Zoom? Do you send them a video first? Or add them to the Facebook group? What do you like? We have an amazing app that has so many tools all together. It has PDFs, it has the videos all there, which I love because I can ask people, would you prefer me to send you something to read or send you something to watch? And I can choose right then. But ultimately my absolute favorite is a system we use called ATM and it stands for add tag message. And we add them to our prospecting group we tag them in something of their interest, something they mentioned that they were wanting to know more about and start a group text message or um, like instant message right away so they have third party validation. Do you have an online resource like a Dropbox or Evernote or a favorite app on your phone that you could recommend? Ooh, I think that my favorite app is probably Marco Polo because this business can be so isolating and it really creates community and culture and you can get to know people um, as you're coaching them or mentoring them or building belief and introducing people together that makes it so personable what's two or three books you could recommend to ml nation so secrets of a millionaire mind is an absolute game changer that will help you with your business blueprint and just your overall money habits my absolute favorite is the four agreements that has changed not just my business, but my personal relationships. And I just started a new one right now that I'm so excited about called The Heart-Led Leader. And here's the last question, the million dollar question. You ready? I'm ready. So imagine you had to start all over again and you knew no one. You were like an alien that went to another universe, but you had all your knowledge, skills, and wisdom. What's the first thing you do or the first place you go to build a network marketing business from scratch? That is the million dollar question. Well, I love to tell people that the best way to grow in your business is to become an incredible recruiter, to be a talent scout, looking for the traits and attributes of the people that will be successful, the people you wanna partner with. Much like a captain of a football team can pick out what they're looking for with their ideal quarterback or running back, and if we weren't in social distancing in our current you know, pandemic times, 
I love to go into places that I frequent, you know, like-minded people, whether that's a gym, a yoga studio, a wine bar, a nail salon, and look for people that are influential. Look for people that are positive, that are complimentary, that are social, that are outgoing, and to be able to share with them why I was attracted to them and to invite them to take a look. And during our current times, social media is an amazing avenue. I mean, there's such an unlimited reach of people and I would do the same thing. So whether it was on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook, joining groups or friending people, again, with those key attributes, people that are into personal growth, into personal development, naturally entrepreneurial, into health and wellness. That's awesome. Hey, th thank you so much. As we wrap up, Lauren, any last words or advice? And then what's the best way listeners can connect with you? So I'm on Facebook, Lauren Sims. I'm on um, Instagram as Life with Lauren Danielle. That's my middle name. I have a YouTube channel. That's my team channel, but I invite anyone to look at it. There's a lot of great information in there for network marketers. It's Dreamers in Action on YouTube. And I think my last bit of advice would just be to never quit. You know, I think in our gut sometimes we know if maybe we didn't align ourselves with the right company the first time, but ultimately when you find a company that fulfills you, a compensation plan that excites you, products you love, to trust the process and trust the journey and that compound effect and what it looks like in the future is absolutely incredible and available for everyone. ML Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, you've been hanging out with Lauren Sims. So keep up the momentum. Go to mlnation.com and go to the podcast tab. And the show notes and all the nuggets of wisdom, but also the links to Lauren's books will be right there. In order to be successful in life and business and network marketing, you must help others. So Lauren, thanks again for sharing your valuable time with ML Nation. We're grateful to you. And we appreciate you for having a positive impact on millions of distributors worldwide. Thank you so much again, and God bless you. Thank you.